I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Judith Murray and Anthony Topping from uh, the London literary agents Green and Heaton. Um, Judith, just tell me how you got, became an agent in the first place. Um, hello there. Um, I became an agent after having worked as an editor for several years and then as a talent scout for translation publishers. So I was looking for material for other publishers in other countries and that led me to be very interested in the role of an agent um, and actually to representing that original material from the UK um, enabled me to read very, very widely and um, I, I became very interested in the idea of working closely with authors and representing that material. And Anthony, how about you? Um, I came from a bookselling background. I was a fiction buyer for a small um, branch of Dillon's on Piccadilly. I was there um, for a couple of years and it was, it was an amazing introduction to aspects of publishing. Um, um, but, but to get to the publishing side, I, I joined Green Heaton as, as assistant to the owner, Carol Heaton, um, and I've been there since 1995, and, and, and basically grew up at the agency and now one of the directors and, and, and representing a very wide range of, of um, writers and presenters, um, and both fiction and non-fiction. And, and what is it, I mean, clearly both of you have the options, if you wanted, to, to work as editors in a publishing house, and you've chosen to the agenting route instead. Why is that? Why, why agents rather than publishers? Well, I had the option, I did in fact work as an editor at the publishing house and I enjoyed it very much. But I chose agenting really because I could combine the role effectively of being an editor. I think you know, the role of an agent has changed. We were talking about this earlier. Yeah. Um, over the years, I, I also joined Green and Heaton in 95, um, but I've been in publishing since 88. And I think it's, it's harder for editors to have time to edit now. And I think also buying a book, an editor wants to buy a book that's pretty much finished and ready to go. So it's our job to get that book. So effectively, you you are saying that the editing function has shifted to a large, to, to a significant degree. A significant degree, not, not in all cases by any means. Um, um, but it's, it's one of the pleasures of the job is to work with manuscripts um, um, to make it both intrinsically better and more valuable. It's one of, it, it's one of the, um, the great pleasures of what we do. And, and how often, if you find something in your slush pile that you think is dazzling in one respect but unfinished is that, is that something that you would take on and work with the author or do you do you think no I'm not looking for potential I'm looking for something that is closer to, to finished if it's dazzling we take it on every single time and we work with the author to make it publishable Definitely. But the dazzling ones don't come along very often, so the harder ones are. We think this is good, it's really good, but it's going to need quite a lot of work from the author at our suggestion to get it to be dazzling. Because dazzling and brilliant, and you know, do we want a publisher not to be able to say no to something these days? They, they have to yeah. really love it. So okay, really love it. so it's getting noisier in the background, yeah. And um, one sentence answer what are you most looking for in, in, a, in a book from a new author? Well, it, it, that doesn't change. It's just something that doesn't let you go. It's just something where every page just makes you want to get to the next page, whether that's commercial fiction, literary fiction. It's, you've just got to do that. Exactly, where you just can't not turn the page. And I think that voice is so important. It's something that's really original and interesting. Um, it blows you away. You can't put it down. Perfect. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.